up everybody Joe White here I uh, just wanted to do this little video talking about the uh, crown jewel oh man it was a good show a lot of gaga thrown in there in the main event which I didn't care for with why does why do we got to play everybody's entrance music when they do a run-in I never will get that but oh well um First, let me start off by saying uh, about the whole Saudi Arabia thing. Everybody, here it is. It's like, what, this is their fifth show? Fifth, sixth show, maybe? In Saudi Arabia? And everybody is still making a fuss of, oh, it's blood money. It's blood money. They shouldn't be running shows over there. It's politically incorrect. It makes them look bad. Get over it, okay? Do I agree with them? running shows over there? Do I like the fact that they're over there giving them that? No. Do I think the Prince of Saudi Arabia is a piece of shit for what he did to that reporter? Yes. But they signed a 10-year deal, and they're not going to back out of it because they get like a billion dollars or so per show. If they offered you the same contract to go over there and do whatever it is you do, you take it. So stop. Just stop. We get it, okay? You don't, I mean, I go to watch post-wrestling, John, uh, John Pollock and all them, and the first thing I hear is they got some woman on there talking about, oh, it's the Saudi Arabia, and they don't like, they shouldn't be going, I'm like, give me a fucking break. Give me a break. It's going to happen. Get over it. If you don't want to, if you don't want to, here's the thing. And then there's like, well, we're just not going to watch the Saudi show. Guess what? They don't care whether you're watching them or not. They've made their money off of it. They don't care. They've made their money off of it. They don't care if you watch or not. If you really want to show a protest, don't watch it all. Don't watch WWE at all until the deal is over. So you have, what, about eight more years to go? Nine, seven more years to go? Otherwise, we're going to see it every damn year, twice a year. So get over it. It's going to happen. They're not going to back out of a multi-billion dollar deal because of some reporter that was killed and, and because the prince of Saudi Arabia is a dickhead. I mean, does, does a clown back out of a birthday party if they find out that the parents are dickheads? And, and no, he goes, he does the birthday party. I know that's a little bit different, but come on, it's just, you know... I'm just sick of hearing it. Every time there's a Saudi Arabia show, you have to hear it. Every time. And guess what? WWE hears or has heard it too, and guess what? They've proven that they don't care and that they're still going to go over there and run shows. So get over it. Enjoy the show. Now, what I do not agree with is them bringing Bray Wyatt all the way over to Saudi Arabia. For that bullshit that we've gotten yet again. I mean, this is getting tiresome. It's been a month already. I know, slow build, and I should have some patience. But if anybody thought we were getting anything major on this show, I knew we weren't going to get much. You could have had him do what he needed to do backstage again instead of appearing in front of, in front of all the Saudis. But maybe the prince wanted to see Bray Wyatt, so that's what we got, you know? Um... The weakest thing on the show to me was was Omos and Braun Strowman. Even though Omos did a really good job, I thought. I mean, he's not the greatest worker in the world, but his his acting was good. Telling, you know, get on up, Braun. Let's give you some more. Braun, get up. Come on. Get on over here. You know, his talking to Braun during the match. Dominating Braun during the match was good. The, the finish, I totally knew that finish was coming. Braun's going to get the shit kicked out of him. And then... Goddamn, uh, Strowman's gonna, you know, Braun's gonna get the shit kicked out of him, or, or, and then all of a sudden he's gonna win. The same thing happened in the opening match with Lashley and Brock. Uh, Brock gets the crap kicked out of him, and then all of a sudden gets the gets the flash victory. I mean, so both of the matches that were like big man versus big man had the same type of finish, not the exact same kind of finish, but the same type of finish. Um, Bailey versus, uh, um, 
Bianca Belair had its weak points. The golf cart spot was totally, totally crazy. Like, it would have been better if she would have just went and ran the ring with the golf cart and Bailey got forced through the ropes or took a dive through the ropes. Um, that table not breaking the first time that she tried to put Bailey through, I was, I cringed. Um, other than that, everything was, the referee not counting while he's supposed to be counting. Oh, my God. In the anvil case, why didn't she just sit down on the anvil case? Bam, 10 count. They're, they're, it's WWE. Um, the main event, let's talk about the main event. Roman Reigns, Logan Paul. Logan, of course, showed everybody that he can, he can work. He did a real good job work. His selling needs a little bit of work, but then again, this is only his third match. I'll admit, dude does a damn good frog splash. That frog splash from the top rope through to through the table on the announce table? Wow, chef's kiss, Logan Paul. That shit was perfect. What WWE has to understand is this is not going to do a damn thing for them. Just because somebody has like 5 million or 5 billion YouTube followers, let me tell you, does not mean that all 5 million YouTube followers are watching him each and every video and are tracking his every movement. They're not, okay? Um, so, I don't think this really did anything for them. If anything, it, it got him a new worker in Logan Paul, but Logan Paul's leaving to go do boxing at the first of the year. He's already said he's going to do another boxing match. Why? I don't know, because he's a better professional wrestler, in my opinion, than he ever will be a boxer, but that's just me. Um... But yeah, his work was solid. I mean, it was really good. It just does nothing going forward for anybody else. Except for Roman. It gives Roman another guy to beat. But what good does it do anybody else on that roster? Does it elevate anybody else? Does it... You no, know, it doesn't do anybody any damn bit of good. Um, the, the only thing you're left wondering is, what's next? It's going to be the same thing with The Rock. When Roman beats The Rock, and I have a very, very, very strong feeling... If that happens at WrestleMania, you're going to be left wondering, okay, now what? Who's still? You're still wondering who's taking the title off of him. So, which I think, the, the, after all this, the most logical person to take that title off of Roman Reigns is Cody Rhodes. And then, it, and then you have a fresh locker room for Cody to run through and Cody to have good matches with. And then it's the problem of, okay, where do you go after Cody? And that's the thing with professional wrestling. You don't need to think two steps ahead. You need to be thinking ten steps ahead. Um, hell, it used to be in the old days, they would take WrestleMania would be, you know, you'd have a WrestleMania, and then they would automatically be thinking about the next year's Mania and book backwards of how you get to there. That's not how it's done anymore, obviously, but, I mean, I'm, I'm left going, okay, uh, Survivor Series, War Games... I don't think Roman's going to be a part of that. So, and I don't think he's going to be a part of TLC in, in December. So, who do you have him face at the Rumble? Brock again? Seen it. Been there. Kevin Owens, maybe? Kevin Owens is the most logical choice. I've seen a lot of people saying, let Sami Zayn be the one to take the title off Roman. That fits, and it makes a new star in the process. It takes Sami Zayn from here up to here. Um, so I'm all for that. If the build is nice and slow, and they keep milking this oozy thing, and, and they continue on with that path. Um, but I do think Roman versus Rock, again, I'll say it again, it does not need the title. It's going to sell itself without the title. Um, but... I don't know where they go from here with it. To me, if I were booking it, it would be Cody um, or Sami Zayn, you know? Those are the two logical things, logical people right now. And the Sami Zayn thing has just fallen into their lap. Really, it has. Um, as my reefer unit turns off. But anyway, guys, I'm going to get off here. Um, Crown Jewel overall, good show. Uh, oh, <laughs> The buckshot lariat from Logan Paul. I will say this. He does that buckshot lariat better than Adam Page has done it in years. So there you go. He did it really well. Oh, and 
I forget what match it was. Oh, man, what match was it? Somebody took a clothesline with a flip bump and landed perfectly on their back. Oh, what match was that? I want to say it was in the Judgment Day versus OC match. Somebody, it was Dominic, yeah. Dominic took a clothesline, did the flip bump, landed completely on his back, and, and it was perfect. So, uh, there you go, Hangman. Just goes to show you that that bump can be done right. Um, anyway, if you see a big rig on the road, give us plenty of room. Do not tailgate. Let us over if we need to get over. Go the speed limit. If you can't see our mirrors, we can't see you, and we'll see you down the road.